Hey, just made a uh, quick run out to the woods out back behind the house where I swapped out the SD cards on my trail cam. I've been taking still pictures of a pretty nice buck out behind the house and uh, I set my camera to video mode and I'm hoping to get some video of this guy to get a better look at him. Oh yeah, I've caught just glimpses of this guy with his head uh, turned away from the camera and down, so it's been hard to really get a good count of uh, the, uh, the tines. But I count uh, five on each side, that's a ten pointer. The one on the right side is just kind of forked a little bit. All right, that's cool and all, but today is brew day. Well, one of the first rules of making a video is uh, <clears throat> have the camera turned on. Uh, I milled the grains just a moment ago, but you'll never see it because I didn't have the camera turned on. I also went over the recipe too, uh, but I'll do that for you again right here. This uh, recipe, it's a Kentucky Common. Uh, similar to the one that I made before, but it has some darker malts in it and it also has some rye in it. This comes from homebrewtalk.com, uh, the uh, specialty and historic recipes forum, I believe. This is called Revy's Kiss Your Cousin Kentucky Common. Uh, being from Kentucky, however, uh, kind of took offense to that a little bit. So I'm just calling it Revy's Kentucky Common. And it has 5 pounds, 8 ounces, or 53.7% pale malt, and I'm using 6 row here. 2 pounds, 8 ounces, or 24.4% of flaked corn. A pound of aromatic malt, that's 9.8%. Uh, a pound of flaked rye, again, 9.8%. 2 ounces of black patent and two ounces of Crystal 120 Levabond. Each of those make up 1.2% of the recipe. My strike water is heating. Uh, as soon as it reaches temperature, I'll dough in, and I'm shooting for a mash temperature of 152 degrees today. All right, my strike temperature is where I want it to be. I don't have any water in here yet because I'm underletting, so the grain goes in first and then the water underneath and fills from the bottom up, as you recall. Also, you might recall, if you've watched for any length of time, I've had uh, constant problems hitting my mash temperatures, even though I'm using the strike temperature that Beersmith predicts. I'm still after dough in, after stirring, ending up with a mash temp that's uh, way too low. And by my calculations, in order to, to, the only way to fix that, other than change my whole way of, uh, of doughing in, uh, is to increase my strike temperature 20 degrees above uh, where I want my mash to settle at. And that just seemed excessive to me. I mean, I'm scratching my head going, that doesn't make sense. I've never had to heat strike water that high before. But after asking some questions on forums and online, uh, it turns out that uh, that might not be so out of the ballpark as I think it is. So uh, I'm looking for a mash temperature of 152. I've got my strike set to 172. And I'm going to underlet. And uh, this time I'm just going to go for it. Got the water level rising up the uh, bottom of the clip here is where my uh, volume marking is. I'll stop when I get there. It's not a whole lot of grain in the kettle. So I'm starting to get seepage over the top already. And this guy likes it. 
All right, so I've doughed in, I've stirred, um, and I'm still a little bit low on my mash temperature. So I'm setting up hoses for recirculation, and uh, I'm just going to slowly bring that up. I would rather miss low than high. I can kind of bring this up slowly and uh, treat it as sort of a gradual step mash. Real quick, before I turn the pump on and start recirculating directly into the mash tun, I want to evacuate any liquid that is still in my Herms coil. My Herms coil set is set up so that it goes in from the top and out of the top. It, it looks like a uh, immersion chiller in there. So it's really difficult to get all of the liquid out of the, uh, the, the, the coil. So what I'm going to do is unhook the out hose, direct this into a bucket or container um, until I start seeing wort coming out. All right? Got it? Good, because I ain't explaining it again. cleaning solution that was in there, sanitizer or whatever it was, is gone. And I can start recirculating. So my pump shut off right there at about 154, 153. Uh, it's just now starting to drop down a little bit. Uh, you can see uh, that's higher than my set point. Uh, the pump should have shut off once it reached 152, but it kept going uh, for a degree or two. Um, I could lower my set point a little bit, and I might try that right about there. And if it overshoots again, hopefully it'll be where I want it to settle at, at 152 degrees. And I've set my hot liquor tank to 180 because what I'm going to do now, while it's kind of resting, is uh, add some more water just to make sure I have plenty of volume left for my uh, sparge. All right, the next step in my mash schedule is to ramp up the temperature to do a mash out 168 degrees. All right, what I'm doing now is just... Uh, setting all of my hoses up for my fly sparge. And what you see entering there is just uh, gravity. Let me turn the pumps on. And that's a little too aggressive. All right, I think that's better. I'll fly sparge until I have my, uh, my boil volume of just under nine gallons. I'll probably just mark it at nine, call it good. And we got a pretty looking wart. A little bit of grain seeped in there in that uh, initial rush. But, so far this has been a pretty good brew day. So I'm right at my pre-boil volume, nine gallons. Uh, I stirred the heck out of it for several minutes to make sure it was all homogenized, had no stratification layers, um, and I'm taking my pre-boil gravity reading. I'm looking for 1037. That would be nine and a half bricks. And what I've got here, if I can find a good light source, I'm right at nine. So that's about 1035. Not too bad. 
The heat's been on for a little while. Still going to take a few more minutes before I get to the boil. But before I do, I want to add some firm cap S. I don't know why I've never used this stuff before. It is a magic elixir and it will eliminate your boil overs. Uh, two drops per gallon. One. One gallon. Two gallons. Nine gallons and uh, just in time too because I'm just starting to see some uh, breaking of the surface here with bubbles and uh, we're rocking and rolling and boiling boys and girls. Here you got a nice vigorous boil. There was no boil over, no foam over whatsoever. That uh, firm cap S just works wonders. Now the uh, heating element is at 100% power. I can dial that down to around 70. And that should hold pretty well for the uh, rest of the boil. And I'll set my boil timer now to one hour. I almost forgot about the hops. Sat down to set my brew day timer and I realized, uh oh, <laughs> there's only one addition of hops. Oh, that smells fantastic. They are cluster, 7.8% alpha acid, uh, purchased from my favorite local homebrew store, Hopcraft Supply in Saginaw, Michigan. Uh, and just one ounce, just dump them right into the kettle. I'm not going to use the, the spider today. There's always one that doesn't want to get into the pool. There you go. And that's it for the hops. Give me a second here and I'll tell you what the IBUs should be. Alright, what are the IBUs I'm looking for? Ah, da -da -da -da. Gravity, alcohol by volume, 21.3 IBUs is what the recipe calls for. Um, I'm probably going to end up a smidge over that because my hops were 7.8 alpha acids and the recipe calls for 7 uh, even. So it's all good. My uh, timer should go off any moment now. Calling for my last boil kettle addition. One teaspoon of yeast nutrient. That's pretty good. Pretty good. All right, so Revy's Kentucky Common is in the fermenter. I ended up a little bit light on volume because of a mistake on my part. I was disconnecting my counterflow chiller and I disconnected the garden hose. I turned around to do something else and all of a sudden I heard liquid pouring on the floor. And uh, I immediately took the counterflow chiller and I directed that liquid into the, the last little bit that was in my uh, bucket to carry downstairs. Uh, and I realized I'm pouring garden hose water into my last maybe half a gallon of wort. So I went, okay, screw it, pitching this. So I ended up half a gallon light in, in volume. Uh, I also ended up a little light on original gravity. Instead of 1049, I've got 1044. Don't know where that went, but uh, it's gone. Um, I pitched Y yeast 1056. And I pitched it a little bit uh, warmer than I normally like to. It's within spec, but it's a little bit warmer. I usually like to pitch within a couple of degrees under the manufacturer's minimum recommendation. Um, but this is at 68 degrees already. Uh, I don't want to wait. It's late. It's dark outside already. It's been a long brew day. It's been a cold brew day. It started raining on me. So I pitched it at 68 degrees. It's still within spec. so. It'll, it'll turn out. Um, about 10 days, week to 10 days, I will probably keg this 
and then within a week or so after that, I'll uh, give you the first uh, report on uh, how it tastes. Brew day's over. Junker. <laughs>